Thank you for joining us this Friday, the 28th of January. I'm Sophia Mavridis, a market analyst with Bell Direct. The local market has taken a dive this week, falling 4.7% Monday to Thursday. And as of Thursday's close, the ASX 200 is down 8% from the peak on January 4th, very similar to the S&P 500's performance. Locally, the tech sector has fallen the most this week, down 9.5%. There haven't been many stocks in the green this week. However, Coden CDA took the lead, its share price higher following a positive trading update, and Macquarie have retained their outperform rating on CDA. Meanwhile, gold miners Silver Lake Resources, SLR, and Evolution Mining, EVN, were among the worst performers on disappointing quarterly production reports with labour shortages in Western Australia. The ore lords finished 5% lower this week. Furniture and homeware retailer Adair's ADH's share price fell a massive 27% following an update that saw significant weakness in its margins due to store closures and the impacts of COVID. While Genworth Mortgage Insurance, GMA, led the XAO after announcing they've been selected as the exclusive provider of lenders' mortgage insurance to the Commonwealth Bank. It's a three-year contract starting the 1st of January 2023. The most traded stocks by Bell Direct clients this week were major banks Westpac, WBC and ANZ, as well as the BetaShares NASDAQ 100 ETF NDQ. Clients also bought into CSL, Northern Star Resources, NST, Transurban Group, TCL and Macquarie, MQG, while took profits from Novonix, NVX, NAB and Mineral Resources, MIN. Now, it has not been the best start to the year for share markets. Markets have pulled back amid rising inflation readings, the global spread of the Omicron variant and the risk that Russia will invade Ukraine. What has caught markets a little by surprise is the increase in the inflation rate, which has forced the Federal Reserve to signal rate rises as early as March. Investors have been trading cautiously. However, in times of doubt, it is important to look at the historical data, which exemplifies the normality as well as the opportunities in share pullbacks. Let's consider the All Ordinaries, which consists of the largest 500 stocks. Despite the volatility in both the three years between 2017 to 2019, as well as the three years between 2018 to 2020, both time periods have shown a positive return of 33% and 24% respectively. This is an average of 12% per annum despite the major market pullbacks in 2018 and 2020. This is the value of having a longer term investment view and in times of severe volatility like we're seeing now, keeping true to your investment strategy. It's normal for the Australian share market to have about one negative year in every five. The good news is that markets do go up over the long term. This is further demonstrated when you look at a 10-year total return. Now, as of the 27th of January, the All Ords has seen a 4.48% total return over the past year, despite the more recent 11% pullback from its recent high. Now, as markets fall, it is always a good time to look for buying opportunities consistent with your investment goals. Those stocks which you may have been watching but felt were too expensive may now be worth looking at again as you rebalance your portfolio. Let's consider a hypothetical example of investing $10,000 in the All Ords over the past three years. You can see the periods of large falls in the market over that time, as well as at the same time, the All Ords has seen a three-year annualised total return of 10.48%. Therefore, the initial investment of $10,000 would be worth $13,485 after the three years. Now, moving on, as we move into February, most companies will be reporting their earnings results. Reporting season provides investors with the opportunity to see how a company, how much a company has earned over the half or full year, as well as their future outlook. During this period, a company's share price usually moves higher or lower based on whether they report results that are better or worse than what most analysts were expecting. So look out for Bell Direct's reporting season coverage throughout February. And our reporting season calendar will be emailed to you early next week. And lastly, economic data to look out for next week includes the interest rate decision on Tuesday, balance of trade data out on Thursday and on Friday, the RBA will provide a statement on monetary policy. 
And that is all for this week. Thank you for listening in. I'm Sophia Mavridis with Bell Direct. Have a great Friday and a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday morning.